I'm Steven Strauss, and I'm Vice President of Marketing at Correlated uh, Magnetics. Over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to talk about polymagnets, what they are, and how they can be used in product design as a way to create product differentiation. I'll talk about how selecting the right polymagnets can allow you, as a product designer, to evoke even the emotional response you want from your products and users. The case study I'm going to discuss revolves around an attachment mechanism for a tablet and a peripheral, like a keyboard or cover. At the end, we'll leave time for Q&A. Let me start by briefly discussing correlated magnetics. We see ourselves as doing three primary things. To start with, we use our new magnetization technology to design magnetic systems that we call polymagnets. I'll get into what a polymagnet is in just a minute. Secondly, we've taken these magnetic systems and created standard parts. These standard parts are accessible to product designers through what we call the polymagnet catalog. And finally, we're a manufacturing company that uses our magnetization technology to produce polymagnets, including in high volume in China for delivery to your manufacturing plant or your manufacturing partners. I'll point out that polymagnets in the polymagnet catalog have a wide variety of functionality and are available in prototyping quantities for delivery as soon as tomorrow. I'll talk about polymagnet supply in more detail at the end of this webinar. Let's dive in and talk about what a polymagnet is. First, to explain the graph. On the right, the north is red and blue is south, and on the left is the field scan of a standard magnet. So polymagnets start as regular rare earth magnets. However, unlike conventional magnets with one north and south, we magnetize this material with our technology, and it turns them into what we call polymagnets. They contain patterns of north and south poles on a single piece of magnetic material. The fields coming off of these patterns of north and south poles in turn defines the feel and function of the polymagnet. So as I said, on the right is a field scan of a polymagnet, where uh, north is red and blue is south. This field scan uh, shows us that this polymagnet has a checkerboard pattern of north and south on it. And that contrasts with a standard field coming off of a standard magnet, like on the left. It's a conventional magnet with one north and south. Conventional magnets are limited in their function because they're limited to a conventional field. With that as background, let's look at a practical application of a polymagnet. I'm going to talk about the simplest thing a magnet does, attaching to a piece of metal, and how a polymagnet differs from a conventional magnet. So the diagram on the left shows the magnetic fields coming off of a conventional magnet. On the right is a diagram of a polymagnet that has a series of north and south poles on it. The field on the polymagnet is tightly focused because the fields don't have to go as far to connect from north to south. There's the same amount of energy coming off of both magnets, but one has much more energy right in front of the magnet where it can do work. The ability to engineer patterns of poles on a piece of magnetic material allows us to manipulate the fields to create different functionality on a magnet. Now let's add a piece of metal to each of these two magnets. The conventional magnet on the left won't hold on that well to the piece of metal because a limited amount of the magnetic field will stay in the metal. In contrast, much of the polymagnet's field will stay in the piece of metal and will hold on much stronger. Likewise, the magnet won't attract from as far a distance as the conventional magnet. Both the stronger attach and the decreased reach are because the field is focused right up front of the polymagnet because of the pattern of north and south on it. Now let's look at a graph comparing a conventional magnet to two different attached polymagnets, much like the ones we just saw in the last two slides. A conventional magnet's strength falls off as you move farther away uh, from it. So as it moves away from a piece of metal, it gets, uh, it gets uh, weaker. You can't change the nature of that curve. It's fixed. You can increase the size or change the grade of the magnet, but the force distance curve is fixed. You take it the way it comes. Now let's contrast that with a polymagnet. By varying the pattern of north and south poles, you get polymagnets that engage at different distances and hold with different strengths. It comes from an increasing the amount of uh, focus in of the energy near or farther from the magnet surface. You can see these differences in the blue and green lines on the graph. Two different polymagnets 
two different patterns of north and south. With different patterns, the magnet has different trade-offs between reach and strength. This is useful if you want a magnet that holds with a lot of strength, but doesn't take up as much space in your product design. Or it's useful if you want to put a magnet near to a sensitive item like a compass or an antenna or where a credit card is going to be. We think of the near distance from an attached polymagnet as the area that has stronger attached force. Likewise, the area past where the field has been concentrated, we think of as the area where the field is controlled and won't cause interference. We have designed a range of polymagnets and put them in the polymagnet catalog. The functionality of polymagnets falls into four categories. I'm going to focus on the top two, as these are the functions I'm going to dive into a bit deeper as we transition into the case study. Let's start with the attached polymagnets in the upper uh, left-hand corner. So attached polymagnets attach to metal like conventional magnets, but with the added differentiation of having higher attached strengths and different shape force curves. Aligned polymagnets add another, uh, another dimension on top of attached polymagnets in that they also exhibit precision alignment, either centering, rotational, or lateral alignment. This stands in contrast to conventional magnets that don't care about orientation as long as north is attracted to south. I'm going to transition now and dive into our case study. I'm going to talk about several polymagnets from the polymagnet catalog that exhibit both attachment and alignment functionality for attaching a tablet peripheral, like a keyboard or a cover, to a tablet. These magnets only want to attach in specific ways. They have what we've come to describe as light yet strong attachment. While this sounds contradictory, what it means is that when they, is that they don't slap together. Their field reach is short. They don't accelerate from a distance and slap, yet they hold on with substantial force. These magnets are also designed to distinctly limit their field strength beyond a certain distance to avoid interference with sensitive items inside a tablet, like a GPS, a compass, or an antenna, or things on the outside of a tablet, like a credit card that a consumer holds nearby. The magnets I'm going to describe, and I have a video that I'm going to show you soon, have the same physical characteristics. They're the same size magnets, yet they come with different alignment characteristics. So you, as a product designer, can choose the one that meets your product design requirements. That is why we describe polymagnets as allowing you, as a product designer, to be able to tune the feel and function of the product you design by choosing the, poly the polymagnet that best suits your needs. You can now evoke an emotional response in your product that you want them to have from the behavior of the magnets on the part of your product's uh, customer. So let's a, take a look at this magnet. The part numbers of the uh, pair of polymagnets that I'm going to talk about are in the graph and are shown at the bottom of this chart. They're long and they're thin, and you would put two down the spine of a tablet and two down the spine of the peripheral that you wanted to attach to the tablet. When attached, at the intended engagement distance, these magnets will hold with increased strength versus a conventional magnet meaning the cover will hold on to the tablet with more holding force than a standard magnet. But that's not all. Let's look at the alignment characteristics of these polymagnets in this chart here. These magnets were designed to not only hold when attached, which is shown in the blue curve, but unlike a conventional magnet, they were engineered with a distinct and separate force curve for how they function when misaligned, shown in the red curve. These magnets will lightly repel anywhere along their length when not aligned, and they'll precisely align and attract with substantial strength when centered on each other. So think about that. It's remarkable, especially when you compare it to conventional magnets. Remember, you can't change the shape of a force curve on a conventional magnet, let alone define how it behaves when misaligned with another magnet. They're going to behave the way they're going to behave. There's another pair of polymagnets in the polymagnet catalog that have the same physical size and shape as the ones I'm talking about here, but they behave differently when misaligned. This other pair will lightly attach instead of lightly repel when misaligned, but still attach with full strength when centered and precisely aligned. So as you're building your tablet with a cover or a keyboard, these polymagnets are amazing tools for making sure your customer has a great experience. With your product. You as a product designer can choose which polymagnets to use to tune the overall experience 
for your customers. I'm going to show you a quick video of two different versions of the magnets, the ones that I've just been talking about. In this video, there's a magnet on top and below a clear piece of plastic. If you purchase some of these poly magnets, this is a good way to get a sense of how they function before you have to embed them in some kind of prototype. So my colleague in the video is going to slide two poly magnets past each other. In the first pair, there's a minor repel force when they slide past each other. And now in the second pair, there's a minor attach force when they slide past each other. Again, same physical size and shape of poly magnets, same alignment characteristics where they want to center exactly on top of each other, different behavior when they're misaligned. One lightly attracts and one lightly repels. So let me summarize the basic points from what I've been talking about with this tablet example. First, poly magnets are available in a variety of shapes and sizes with a variety of functions. The second point, these functions are way beyond what a conventional magnet can do. You're no longer limited to simple attract and repel with magnets. Third point, within the, the, the wide variety of functions that poly magnets come in, they're available with variants with different fields for that function. So the fourth and final point that you as a product designer can choose the poly magnet with the right feel and function for the product you're designing. As I finish up this case study uh, discussion, I want to point out that custom poly magnets are also available. We think of the four core polymagnet functions as building blocks that can be combined in a wide variety of ways. So let's say your product, like this tablet that we just discussed, has a case with a specific thickness. The magnets will be a certain distance from a piece of sensitive electronics, and you want a certain alignment function. If what you find in the polymagnet catalog isn't working for your product design, look into custom polymagnet solutions. If you want to discuss the feasibility of custom polymagnets for your product design, you can contact us through our contacts page on our website, which is polymagnet.com. And that's actually a good transition back to correlated magnetics. I'm going to wrap up this webinar shortly, and uh, we'll be ready to take questions. We create custom polymagnets and the polymagnets in the polymagnet catalog using magnetic system design tools. These include simulation and field and force measurement that complements our magnetization technology that lets us put patterns of north and south anywhere on a magnet. And finally, you can buy poly magnets. And when I say buy, I mean even just one magnet from our US-based partners, Amazing Magnets in California and Industrial Magnetics in Michigan. And high volumes of poly magnets come out of our manufacturing facility in China that can ship to your manufacturing facilities in China or anywhere around the world. And I'll note that if you want to see for yourself how polymagnets work and even build a prototype product around them, it's not too late to order them today for delivery tomorrow with, an overnight, with overnight shipping. With that, um, I am going to wrap up our uh, prepared remarks for the webinar. So far, I see that we have uh, several questions that have come in, and um, I will start with the first one. The first one is, do rare earth magnets rust? or are they washable? So that's a great question. Um, let's separate this out. Polymagnets and polymagnet technology is a magnetization capability on top of uh, magnetic materials, existing magnetic materials. Rare earth magnets, uh, when they're uncoated, are, uh, they definitely rust and they definitely degrade rapidly. So you actually never can buy rare earth magnets without a coating on. Standard coating on a rare earth magnet is a, a sandwich of nickel, copper, and nickel. And that's good for you know, basically uh, normal operating environments. But there are a wide range of uh, coatings for magnets that are available, uh, you know, all the way up to titanium, um, that are appropriate for specific environmental challenges. So if you are thinking about putting magnets in you know, environmentally challenging areas, uh, there's plenty of information out on different uh, coatings for, uh, for magnets, and we would also be happy to talk to you about that. So I appreciate that question. Um, let me go to the next question. So the question is, um, this uh, person says that they uh, understand that you can put traditional multipole magnets uh, facing each other 
to uh, transfer torque across a uh, air gap uh, for a magnetic coupling. And the question is whether magnetization, uh, a more complex magnetization pattern with polymagnets can give more, pork des uh, more torque density than a multipole magnet. And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, our company has uh, done uh, extensive work in uh, torque transfer across an air gap. And uh, we did publish uh, one article it's in a uh, journal called ANSYS Advantage. And if you were to look on the web uh, for correlated magnetics and uh, ANSYS Advantage, I think you will find that there. And um, we, uh, you know, what we did is we optimized a pattern specifically for torque transfer across an air gap, uh, specifically for um, a magnetic coupling. Uh, the next question is, is there a size limit on... Uh, polymagnets, and where below you might not get functionality uh, better than a uh, conventional magnet. The patterns that we put down on a magnet uh, determine their function. You know, if a magnet gets too small, we start to lose uh, basically the area to put down multiple poles to create these behaviors. The more complex behaviors require uh, more poles, therefore more magnet uh, surface area. The smallest size pole area that we put down is currently half a millimeter. You can get a difference in behavior between a conventional magnet with a single polarity on a, uh, a piece of magnetic material. Beyond that, it's very hard to say exactly where the threshold is for a polymagnet because it depends on the function. Again, the more advanced function might require five or ten different regions uh, to get that behavior. But it is absolutely the case that you uh, definitely change the functionality of a polymagnet with even just one uh, with one uh, pole uh, changed. So, what is the smallest north-south magnetization distance? Is the uh, question. So, <clears throat> uh, the next part of that question is: What is the largest magnet size that can be magnetized with this small north-south magnetization distance? I think this. Uh, question is getting at the uh, resolution of the pattern and also the thickness of the magnet and how deep does the, uh, the magnetization go. I think that's what this question is getting at. We have the ability to put these regions down anywhere on a magnetic material. We're not limited to a grid. So you can actually fill in whole areas with, you know, with north and you can put uh, you know, south right next to north or even overlap them. Now, because they're magnets, they're going to have and magnetic fields. There's interesting consequences when you do certain things with uh, magnets. Some that aren't productive um, from a from a work perspective and getting the function you want. But we have incredible control over that. Now, let's talk about the thickness through which uh, our magnetization goes through. By and large, what we say is the smallest region which we magnetize is roughly equal to the thickness of the magnet that we are uh, magnetizing. So if the smallest region you're putting on a magnet is one millimeter, then the thickness would be one millimeter. That is not always the case. And as our technology evolves, that will substa uh, change substantially. That is, uh, that is what I'll say on that. The other thing I'd say is that you can also stack magnets with complex patterns. And interestingly, because uh, the complex patterns are on the entire stack, they all line up exactly in the same place. Now, there are some losses in the interface between those magnets, but they're relatively minor. So you can actually make very small patterns on very thick magnets. I'll just say that our technology is evolving as far as uh, thickness, and uh, so my answer will change over, uh, over time. Next question. The question is, can we apply uh, our magnetization to non-planar surfaces, so uh, three-dimensional shapes, et cetera? So the answer is uh, technically yes, we have done that and uh, and proven it and and done it uh, effectively. Uh, from a commercial perspective, right now our volume magnetization is only planar, and that is because that's where customers are bringing us. The customers that we have and the ones that are talking to us about future applications have uniformly been interested in planar surfaces. But if you have applications which are not planar surfaces, feel free to contact us. We'd love to talk to you about them. Uh, again, the technology absolutely works, um, but the automation aspect of it is uh, we do not have that in production. So here's a question. Um, how does the magnetization system work? 
there are some pieces out on the internet, articles that have been written about the magnetization technology. But I'll give you a, a, a very a quick summary here. We have invented a very novel coil, which we pulse with a novel uh, pulsing circuit. And we have computer controlled motion on the uh, tray that magnets sit in and where the, uh, the coil is. In software, we define where we want that coil to uh, fire and the motion control moves the magnet and uh, we pulse at the appropriate time with the appropriate uh, pull and the appropriate pulse. And uh, what's left is a region that is magnetized with, uh, with either north or south. There's, uh, there are videos out on the web, there's articles written about it, but hopefully that's a, um, a uh, quick summary of how our magnetization technology works. This question is about magnetic encoding applications. We put out a press release uh, in January about a partnership that we have with a company called AKM Semiconductor, which is the largest magnetic uh, sensing chip company in the world. We are partnering with them to basically add sensing capabilities to our mechanical polymagnets. So the idea is that all the same feel and function that we've talked about in this webinar and in you know that uh, are available in our polymagnet catalog have the ability to add an encoding uh, capability so that they can be read by a sensor. And we are just starting down that path. Uh, we're very excited about it. It absolutely works. We have prototypes working, we have demo boards working, and uh, we are starting to show those to customers. So if this is something that you're interested, we would be very interested in speaking with you. This question is about magnetic bearings. So we have done some work in magnetic bearings, but I would say it is not commercially available. If you have an interest in that, feel free to contact uh, me about that. So with that, I would very much like to thank everyone for attending. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'll pass you back to Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. That's, it for, That's it for today's webinar. If you would like to get in touch with us, please feel free to either email Stephen using the address on your screen or visit the contact page on our website, polymagnet.com. On behalf of Related Magnetics, I would like to thank you for attending. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.